Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond. Welcome back to another YouTube video, and we are looking at TriHackMe's Advent of Cyber, and this is day 20. It's called Power Shelf to the Rescue. I think they nudged the word elf in the middle of Power Shell, so that's nice and fun. But I am logged in on the TriHackMe website, I'm connected to their VPN, and I am ready to tackle this task. So, without further ado, let's dive in, and I'll read through here just to get a little background for us. It says, Someone is mischievous at the best festival company. The contents within the stockings have been removed. A clue was left in one of the stockings that hints the, con the contents have been hidden within Elf Station 1. McEager moves quickly and attempts to RDP in the machine, but yikes, he's unable to log in. Luckily, He's been learning PowerShell, and he can remote into the workstation using PowerShell over SSH. So our task is to use the PowerShell console to navigate through the endpoint to find the hidden contents to reveal what was hidden in the stockings. Okay, so we will be using SSH to connect into this remote. Excuse me, connect into this remote machine, and the command to run to connect to the remote machine will be SSH, and then you can use TAC L to specify the username, which we can see is McEager, and the IP address of the machine here. So mine has been deployed at 10.10.150.130, but again, as usual, your IP address will be different. The password that we'll supply is Rockstar with a zero lead speak for the O, a capital S for star, and an exclamation point trailing at the end. So I will go ahead and copy the syntax to SSH with that user over there, and I have a little terminal up and ready that I can use. I'll paste this in, and I have already accepted it, although you might be prompted with a, hey, are you sure you want to connect to this host? You can type in the letters Y-E-S for yes, and then you should be prompted for the password. Now we know the password is Rockstar with that zero for Elite Speak, capital S for star, and an exclamation point at the end. Now, when I enter that password, I should be logged in. Note, however, once you log in, you'll see this prompt, and that is cmd.exe. That is going to end up being the original Windows console, but we need to manually launch PowerShell. So we'll need to type in the command PowerShell. Let's do that. I will type in PowerShell. It'll take just a second, and PowerShell is a little notorious for being slow, and especially over this connection, we should maybe give it some time. Uh, but you should see that our prompt has changed to include a PS for PowerShell here. Now when we type in our commands, you can see they're highlighted usually in yellow. Or anything that we might be typing in the command line, it is going to have some nice syntax highlighting. So kudos to PowerShell for that. Now let's go see what we are up against. We want to navigate to the documents folder, okay? So I guess we can just do that. They're using the set hyphen location document syntax. Um, PowerShell is kind of inherently verbose in that it is lengthy, long verb hyphen noun syntax for its commands or commandlets, as PowerShell calls them. Um, there are aliases or kind of shorthand nicknames that you can use because on a Linux terminal or on a Windows command prompt cmd.exe you might be more familiar with typing cd to change directory. You can just as easily do that. Set location is the full length verbose verb hyphen noun commandlet but the alias or the shorthand nickname the convenience function is simply cd. So we could use either, and I'll explore or discuss a little bit more of those as we read on. But if we were to go ahead and set hyphen location over to documents, you should see our prompt changes, and now we have documents present. Um, we're using a relative path when we do that. So if I were to CD to the parent directory up up there, if I were to get hyphen child item, and PowerShell, thankfully, does not care about case, so my weird lowercase i and capital T there would be all right. Get child items will tell us everything. Oh, excuse me, with not plural. Get child item. And you can see that PowerShell will give us this big, bloody red error when we have something wrong. But get child item should display everything here, and we can see that downloads, documents, desktop, documents is in there as a relative file location we can move into. So let's go ahead and do that set hyphen location or CD 
into documents. There we go. And as I mentioned before, PowerShell is not case sensitive. So I could be kind of memeing over here with set location, period, period. And PowerShell will know to do that totally fine. Good, good. Let's get back into documents with that CD shorthand syntax. I'll hit Control L on my keyboard to clear the screen. And now let's go back to keep reading the task. Here's a little bit of explanation and background on what PowerShell is. It says, the official explanation of PowerShell is PowerShell is a cross-platform task automation and configuration management framework consisting of a command line shell and scripting language. Unlike most shells, which accept and return text, like you would expect in the Linux command line when you pipe one command into another, PowerShell is going to differ from that. PowerShell is built on top of the .NET Common Language Runtime, or CLR, and accepts and returns .NET objects. This fundamental change brings entirely new tools and methods for automation. So what you're used to, if you're working the Linux command line when you're running your cat command and you pipe it to head or you use grep or tail or set or awk, um, you're funneling through text on the standard output stream or the standard error stream or the standard input stream. Um, but that is just raw, plain text, all the letters and printable characters that display out on your terminal. When you're working in PowerShell, that turns it on its head and it's completely different. It changes the game because it's not just text that's being funneled through, but .NET objects. So if we put on our programmer hats, that means that, okay, abstract objects are a thing with properties and methods and things that it can do and run, but information relative to that. And you can funnel through each of those through the PowerShell pipeline. That's the gimmick and gotcha with PowerShell. PowerShell has grown in popularity the last few years among defenders and especially attackers because PowerShell is typically always just about going to be forever on the Windows desktop or the Windows server. It's native now. Knowing PowerShell is a necessary skill. If you have only heard of PowerShell but never dabbled with it, fret not, today you will. Recall from the definition above that PowerShell is a command line shell. We must enter commands into the command prompt to instruct PowerShell on what we want it to do for us. PowerShell commands are known as commandlets. And that's an interesting spelling, right? CMD lets, CMD L-E-T-S. That's, that's the way it is. And that is what PowerShell calls sort of its syntax. But again, the verb hyphen noun presentation, and they're called commandlets rather than commands, like the Linux or CMD.exe world. To list the contents of the current directory we're in, we can use the get hyphen child item commandlet. There are various other options we can use with this commandlet to enhance its capabilities further. Now, this goes through and kind of bullet points all the other parameters or arguments you could use with the get hyphen child commandlet. And we could zoom in on these more if we'd like to. Um, it, that can all be explained with us with get hyphen help and then passing in the commandlet that we would like to use. That will give a ton of information, oftentimes including examples, and you can see all the different parameters or arguments that that commandlet might take. So I think I have some old videos actually, and I need to actually continue that series on PowerShell. So if you're interested, you can go check those out on my channel. Uh, but let's look at some of these arguments. Tack path will specify a path to one or more locations, and you can use wildcards or the asterisk, right? A little glob or a wildcard to match any string. Tack file or tack directory can get a list of files if you're using the file parameter. To get a list of directories, use the directory parameter. You can also use the recurse parameter with file and or directory parameters, so you're only focusing on files or you're only focusing on directories when you're trying to list them all out. You don't care about the other, just what you specify. Tack filter specifies a filter to qualify the path parameter. Tack recurse will get the item in the specified location and in all child items of the locations. So that means it'll 
like burrow down and dig through all of the different subdirectories or the subfolders. So while we might be in our user Elf McEager location, he has his desktop and his documents and his downloads and his favorites and all the other folders in the in his directory. If we were to use TAC Recurse, it will spiral through all of those subfolders and directories. Recurse can be hefty but very powerful. TAC Hidden will only get hidden items. And that might be useful for us because we're going to end up looking for things that were trying to be uh, hid or obfuscated or slid under the radar, right? They're trying to be masked and not immediately displayed. They're, they're wanting to camouflage or blend in. So tack hidden might be very, very useful for us. Another option here, tack error action silently continue specifies what action to take if the command encounters an error. Note that error action parameter or that argument is what allows you to specify what takes what takes action, uh, what action is, is being taken place, right? Silently continue is an example of one of those actions. There are others that you can supply for this error action parameter or argument. So silently continue just means totally ignore the errors. I don't care. Just keep cruising through. But we could have it do something else if we wanted to with that hyphen error action option. For example, if you wanted to view all of the hidden files in the current directory you're in, you can issue the following command. Get child item tack file, again, only viewing files that are hidden, and ignore errors. So the error action should be silently continue. Another useful commandlet is get content. This will allow you to read the contents of a file. Again, PowerShell is verbose. This verb hyphen noun syntax might very well match what you know in your mind as the cat command on Linux or the type command in old school Windows cmd.exe. Get content is the full commandlet, but those cat commands and type commands are aliases. So you can still use them within PowerShell. If you wanted to, we could dive into a whole get hyphen alias or set hyphen alias syntax all throughout PowerShell. Or you could go do that kind of as an extra exercise for the reader. But Okay, you can run the command as follows, get content hyphen path, and then the file name that you want to read out, right? That's a relative path here. Tack path is kind of inherently default. So if you don't specify tack path, it knows the argument following this commandlet will be what you want to read out. So that works. You can run numerous operations with the get hyphen content commandlet to give you more information about a particular file you're inspecting like how many words are in the file, in the exact position for a particular string, etc. We can combine that by using that PowerShell pipeline where we're carrying whole .NET objects through to another commandlet. To get the number of words contained within a file, you can use get content and pipe the results into the measure hyphen object commandlet. You can run the command as follows, get hyphen content, excuse me, tag path, pipe to measure object and then hyphen word will display all that. Very cool. To get the exact position of a string within a file, you can use the following command, get content hyphen path file.txt and then you can specify an index. So index is going to end up taking the output of this commandlet and that's why it's kind of noted here in these parentheses because now we're going to do a little bit more .NET or programmer stuff with it and we will index it with these square braces at a specific number and that you data find that here the index is the numerical value that is the location of the string within the file since indexes start at zero you typically need to subtract one from the original value to extract the string at the current position however this is not necessary for this exercise so that's one way to do it where you wrap your commandlet in parentheses and then index it with square braces i'm going to end up using the select string notion because we also encourage that later on so to change directories, we use set location or CD, just as we saw. The last command that is needed to solve this room is select hyphen string. And the shorthand alias for that is just select, where you don't have to type in the hyphen string. And I know this is a water hose. I know I'm just throwing stuff at you, but we'll get to see it in just a second. We'll dive into the command line and do it for real. This commandlet will search a particular file for a pattern you define within the command to run. An example execution of this command is select string with the path and tack 
pattern to find a specific thing. And notice they're using that asterisk or the star, the wild card to glob information. And of course, as I mentioned, you can always use get hyphen help to learn more about a specific commandlet. And I'd recommend doing that even just as you go through each of these, just to see what else it can do and how else you could use PowerShell to your advantage. So that's cool. All right. Search for the first hidden elf file within the documents folder. Read the contents of this file. What does elf one want? Hmm. Well, let's take a look. We are currently in the documents folder and we knew that we could run get hyphen child item and we could specify tac file to only get files and we could specify tac hidden to only get hidden files, right? So I'll hit enter on this. Ooh, and I see an E1 elf seemingly, <laughs> a one for our L here elf1.txt, and you can see in the mode description over here, there's an H indicator, and that means that it is a hidden file. If you were to run something like ls or dir, again, because those are aliases, they will work, and you can still just as easily pass in those arguments. PowerShell will know. But if we were to run ls, dir, or get child item without that, you will see an elf1.txt with a regular L, but notice the length here is different, 22 versus 35, and that mode, it is not hidden. That's actually a, a neat little troll, right? So I could get hyphen content on elf1.txt with the L, but it's a little red herring. Hey, nothing to see here. Now notice I use get content, but again, we could just as easily use cat or type because they are PowerShell aliases. So now let's go ahead and cat out that elf1 with a 1 that we know is the hidden file that we want. So I'll go ahead and cat e1f1.txt. And the answer here is I want my two front teeth. All I want is my two front teeth. So I'll go ahead and copy that and I'll paste that in here. And I'll submit this and that is the correct answer. So cool. That's all that we needed to do for that one. Next we need to search on the desktop for a hidden folder that contains the file for elf2, and then read the contents of that file. Okay, so we're currently in documents, right? So I'll clear my screen, I'm gonna hit Control L on my keyboard, or just CLS, typed in as a command, and I'll use CD, dot dot, remember that's an alias for set location, climb us out of the documents directory, and then just so we get good practice with it, I will set location to the desktop, if I can type, you can of course tab complete, right? So if you start typing something and you know that there's only a certain amount of folders, locations that begin with that syntax, you can just hit tab twice on your keyboard and it'll automatically fill out the rest for you. Now again, I'll ls, nothing currently on the desktop, but if I ls tack hidden, ooh, I can see there is an elf2 wo, and that's a directory. Right, so if I were to do the exact same command, ls tack hidden, but also note tack directory, it would be able to find just that, excluding that desktop.ini file. So let's cd into that directory. Let's get child item, or ls, or dir, and now you can see there is one .txt file here that we want to know the contents of. So let's simply go ahead and cat that file out. Or, or, excuse me, get content. Maybe, it, I don't know if this is getting confusing where I'm throwing aliases in left and right, but uh, I want you to know that PowerShell can act as just exactly like, or very, very similar to at least what you type in via commands, like what you're used to. If you're used to Linux, if you're used to the Windows command prompt, um, you can use those commands and it, and it will behave. But the pipeline, what you do when you end up piping commandlets into one another, that is functionally very, very different. Anyway, our answer here is I want the movie Scrooge. So Scrooge is the answer. Let's go ahead and submit that, also correct. And now search the Windows directory for a hidden folder that contains files for ELF3. Now, I didn't exactly interpret this immediately well. I went to C colon backslash Windows and then I tried to look around in here, but I couldn't find anything worthwhile. Um, so I went into C Windows System 32. And that is, I, well, from what I understand, what they're referring to. But C Windows System 32 has all of the 
like inherent necessary files for your Windows operating system. So there's a lot in here. You can see that command obviously was running for a long time. So we need to smartly look for what we're finding here. We need to smartly look for a hidden folder that contains files for ELF3. What is the name of that hidden folder? Okay, so let's go ahead and ls or dir or get child item. And remember we could simply filter for what we're looking for, right? So tac filter could be kind of only returning things that match a given criteria or, emit or match a correct string constraint, right? So I will define that with these string indicators, right? The double quotes or the single quotes. And then I could use those asterisks to note the wild cards before or after the number three. So I want you to match anything that includes a, the number three somewhere. And I can run that. And now there's a lot of stuff, but we know we can zoom in on that even more, right? We're looking for a folder that is hidden. So let's take that same exact commandlet and let's use tac hidden and let's use tac directory. Now when I run this, we only have one result and that's much easier to, to work through here. And it's called elf3. So we can CD into that change directory or set location, submit elf3 as the answer. There we go. And that is what the hint would have suggested for us here. Use tac filter with that notion there. How many words does this first file contain? Oh, do we have multiple files in here? Looks like dir ls get child item does not show anything. So we must need to specify tac hidden because maybe they're hidden files here. There we go. I see a one dot text and a two dot text. So let's get content on one dot text and there is a lot of output there but we need to know how many words are in this file right so i will clear the screen and i'll pipe i'll use that powershell pipeline to pass in the dot net object that get content is returning i'll pipe that to measure object just as we read about earlier and now measure object, supplying it with all of this information or without any arguments or parameters afterwards, it gives me a count of 9999. Um, let's use that tac word parameter that we knew was a thing from reading. And that tells us, okay, 9999. So that must be the answer. 9999, submit that, perfect. And what two words are at index 551 and 6991 in the first file? Well, let's, um, let's try to use that syntax that they suggested, right? Let's use the get content one dot text and wrap that commandlet within parentheses. So we'll have an opening parentheses at the start and an ending parentheses there. And then we can use the square braces with a specific index. So in this case, 551 is what we wanna see first. Okay, and that word is red. But I would also like to get 6991. That also retrieves it. Cool. Red rider are the words that it needs. And you could do this kind of one by one if you'd like to. The other way we could do this, what I had kind of hinted towards earlier, is using the get content and then select or pipe it to select string. As we know, select is the alias to it. And then you can specify tac index or hyphen index. And you can say, I want index 551. Oh, sorry. That might just be select then. I think, yeah, I'm, excuse me. Select is a shorthand or an alias for select object rather than select string. Forgive me. There we go. And we could, of course, use 6991 as another argument in that as well if we would like. So 551 and 6991 will retrieve the string red writer, and that is select object as the command that I'm using there. We could uh, use the alias and we could specify just select, but you get the exact same result, right? Because you're running the exact same command. Regardless, we know that red writer is our answer here. So let's type that in. Submit that. And this is only half the answer. Search in the second file for the phrase from the previous question to get the full answer. What does ELF3 want? Okay, so now we're gonna work with this second 
text file. So get content two dot text. And there's a lot here. And we want to what? Search in the second file for the phrase from the previous question to get the right answer. So we need to look for red writer in this whole big file here. So now we can end up using select string with a specific pattern. And that was the syntax that they showcased. So is it just red writer with the capital letters? Does that hit anything? I'm not, I'm not using the asterisks right now, but I think that would just mean strictly, specifically one instance. Um, let's, I'm not getting a hit, right? So let's use the asterisks here. See if that finds anything. Oh, red writer is not a valid regular expression. Should, uh, should I be using regular expressions with like a dot star? Dot star. And do the spaces matter in that? What does that hint say? Okay, red rider should all be lowercase. So maybe we don't need to end up using those. Let's clear the screen and let's use red rider all lowercase. Just taking the hint, just trying to understand a little bit more of what TryHackMe wants. Are they using the asterisks in that? Did I misread that? No, I did not. Red Rider BB gun. All right, that must be the answer. Let's go ahead and submit that, but it needs spaces. So Red Rider BB gun. Submit. All right, there we go. We did it. So that was some live learning, right? That was some good activity using PowerShell and getting an understanding for all that we can do with it. But this was kind of simple, hey, navigating around the file system, reading files, doing some good stuff, but that is absolutely necessary while you learn PowerShell, right? You're gonna be doing this on a Windows host, you're gonna be doing this on Windows, so you gotta be able to bump around that file system, understand what all the files are there and what they contain, et cetera. So this is absolutely necessary, and then you can use that as a, as a springboard or jumping off point to learn even more PowerShell. But this was, this was a lot of fun, I think. Um, it's always nice to be able to take a look at system or hidden files, exactly, uh, because that's where the adversary is going to hide, right? Or at least the, some might try to. So using and knowing a lot of these parameters are very, very good to do. And of course, take a look at get hyphen help. Like always just be reading, just understand a little bit of the documentation, the man pages, right? RTFM. So and you can also, of course, just pass in an alias for that too. So if I were to use get help, get help, excuse me, on LS, you can see that's defining the get child item commandlet. And the aliases there are going to explain a little bit more here. Um, get help will also include some remarks, which is really great because it tells you like, hey, it can't find more information on this. So you could use update help to get more information. Or you could end up, I think, passing like full. Is that the right commandlet? Or it might give you some example, um, like example use cases or more in-depth inf information regarding the parameters. You could actually get help on the get help command. And that's kind of meta, <laughs> but but very, very cool and very, very fun. So uh, explore, use PowerShell, understand a little bit about it and keep digging around, keep, keep trying things to tinker with. But this has been a long video, much longer than it needed to be. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you had fun with this one. I hope you're gonna use a little bit more PowerShell and I hope you're gonna keep cruising to finish up TriHackMe's Advent of Cyber. But I'll see you in the next video, everyone. I love you, take care.